Howdy, folks! How are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and look what I hath wrought with mine own hands! This is the Howdy, folks, Tower. That's not the official name. That's just what we're going with for right now. This is where we will manufacture weapons and manufacture uh, medium voltage and high voltage and all kinds of solar panels. It's going to be amazing. And it's not finished yet, but the foundations are laid, so to speak. The framing is finished. There's walls up. What I'm trying to say is that it is finished, but it's not finished, right? It's finished, but not furnished, if you will. Although that's still not quite accurate. But uh, we just wanted, you know, before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's episode, give you a bit of a look at the darn thing. So as you can see, we did do that design where on this side, every three floors, it tapers in. Uh, and then on this side, every three floors, it does not taper in. It takes so long to fly from one side to the other. But it stays completely flat and goes all the way up to the point where I almost think that this side looks a little bit silly because of how flat it is. But I've had some ideas that I'm going to run past you real fast. You can already see down here I was doing a little bit of a little bit of experimentation. I had the idea of using polished andesite for this part that juts out. So having this section here, all of this be polished andesite. So you have this like stark white marble and then this dark andesite. And then we're still going to have a bit of a bulbous growth on the outside here, which is going to house all kinds of things. That's going to be where we route all of our power, all of our item pipes, as well as all of our teleporters so that we can teleport around. And then maybe also a ladder, because in the event that for some reason we can't fly, we need to get our way to the top, then we're, we're going to need that. But uh, it, speaking of the top, it is now all the way at the build limit. And I got to say, I didn't intend for this to be perfect. It just worked out to be perfect. Each of these floors is uh, six blocks uh, of air, and this top floor just happened to go right to the build limit, and it was perfect with the tapering right there and everything. Welcome to the executive suite, where occasionally, for some reason, we lose the marble in these stairs, and I don't know why. It might be because we're so close to the build limit, but for some reason... The marble keeps just, like, hopping out of these stairs, and I don't know why, and I, I don't know how to make it stop. I have to come back up here, and I can manually put these back in there. As you can see, it's complaining about the build height. See, look, I did it. See, see what I mean? It's just, it's very odd. Very odd what we're dealing with up here. Uh, we might have to come up with a solution outside of using the stairs. See, so, like, watch this. Okay? Yeah, never mind, then. I, whatever, it doesn't matter. This is the executive suite here at the top, and I had played around with having this be a marble roof and a marble floor to kind of make the executive suite feel more, well, executive, more kind of private. The issue I ran into was that that blocked light, you know, as one might expect, from reaching the lower floors, and I didn't want to block light from reaching the lower floors because... Let me tell you, right now it seems pretty well lit in here. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> the whole game just kind of froze a little bit. But as soon as you put a marble ceiling on this thing, it gets so dark right down here in the factory. Like, right now it seems pretty well lit. But I gotta tell you, once that, even though it's way up there through many, many layers of semi-opaque flooring, once you actually put a marble roof up there, it was, like, oppressively dark in here. But this is the factory. This is what we've done. It's not finished, like I said. I, I still need to add the final like, finishing touches. I might change that over there to be andesite. I've still got to do these windows and figure out exactly what kind of pattern I want to go with. And then I need to add some sort of texturing to this flat wall because it looks ridiculous. And something I thought about doing was instead of having this be flat, you know, while that side tapers in, have this side taper out. And then, I mean, at some point, it's going to start looking like Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated, and uh, I'm aware of that. But, well, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll address the problems as they arise, and we'll, we'll fix it as we go. But what are we doing today? It's a great question. First thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to try to blow my nose. Ah, there we go. Sorry, my allergies are very much triggered right now. I went outside today and replaced the rear brake pads on my car which required that I be outside for more than, you know, like five minutes. So that means that my allergies are just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm suffering right now. But it's okay. Life goes on. I'll find a way to survive. What matters right now is the tower and what we do with it. 
And of course, one of the first things we're going to do with it is we're going to go down here, not to this floor, but to this one right beneath this floor, and this... Uh, this is, so every few floors you have a floor that's a little bit taller, just because of the tapering. So you go one, two, three, you got a slightly taller floor. Uh, I figure on this floor, this is where we're going to do metal manufacturing. I don't know why, I kind of thought about not doing that here. Because this floor has some extra space, maybe saving it for like proper manufacturing. Things where we'll need uh, different devices like, uh, well, I don't know, do we need auto workbenches? In la the last episode... We discussed the idea of having these, like, auto-crafting... Well, first off, we have the suppliers, which we definitely do need. Providers, suppliers, but then also there are crafting pipes, I believe is what they're called. Is that it right there? Crafting logistics pipe. Crafts one item at a time, attaches to an automatic crafting table. Oh, wait, what? Well, that's confusing. Automatically crafts the item inside when requested. Can use a satellite pipe to send inputs elsewhere. Okay, maybe I don't entirely understand what that's telling me. Activate requester plus source. See, it's confusing, and that's why I don't want to engage with it. It hurts my brain, and it makes me feel confusion. So I don't really want to engage with it. But then you have all these, like, uh, like crafting modules. What does that do? Does that just get used in the craft? No, that's, like, a different thing from this, whatever this is. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like, is this just a module that will craft things inside of... I mean, I guess I could look up. Let's see. Minecraft crafting module uh, logistics pipes. This is what we'll do. Used in conjunction with a machine to craft items automatically within the network if requested and can also route items. What? But, but what does it mean? Whoa! Wait a minute. Okay, well, hold on. We're going to hold on to this. I just read about something called the request... Well, maybe if I spelled it properly. Oh, I've lost the cursor now. Gosh dang it. Okay, what is this? Is this it? The request table. Get a load of this. I'm reading off of someone's Reddit post. It combines the functionality of a request pipe, a chest, and a crafting table. It's comparable to an ME crafting grid and is an extremely useful block, which I do recommend you put in key locations at your base. In addition to being able to order items from sources or starting auto-crafting jobs, you can also order... Necessary ingredients for crafting recipes with it. You can paste JEI recipes as ghost items into the crafting grid. Then you can use the various plus buttons to order the necessary ingredients once, 10 times, or 64 times respectively. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me with this item? We can just have this, pull up a recipe, hit the buttons, and it'll pull the items in, provided everything has a requester pipe, which not everything currently has a requester pipe, but everything should at some point, have a requester pipe. We're going to have to, like, redo everything so that it all has a requester pipe. That's what I'm starting to learn here. Okay, you know what? That's all very complicated, and we'll need to do more research. For now, it is time to move the manufacturing of things like, well, pretty much all of the metals. So, kind of everything on this wall here. Everything from bronze, tin, gold, silver. That's actually gold. That's nothing. Iron. Anything that's an ingot that can be, like, mass manufactured is going to be mass manufactured. I guess not on this floor, because I've talked myself out of that, but instead on this floor. I don't really know how we're going to lay it all out, but gosh darn it, we're going to figure it out. And one of the important things we need to look at for this, because I've already decided this is how we're going to do things, is we need to look at furnaces. Red dark matter and red matter. I don't know if we've ever built either of these, but they're both pretty cool. And yeah, they're both very expensive, but you know what? We can afford it because we have 161,000 EMC. Or actually, hold on. No, we don't. We have 161 million EMC. And you know what? We could have more. We could absolutely have more. If we fly up here and just have a look inside of this here container, you'll see that we actually do have 53,000 diamonds. So if I just wanted to go ahead and grab some extra diamonds, you know, and pump them into here. It feels like I filled up my inventory. Why is it not filled up anymore? What happened there? That was odd, wasn't it? Did I, did I imagine seeing diamonds all in here? What's going on? That's concern. Am I... So I... The, 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 here's the thing. There's one of two options and neither of them are good. Either the game is broken or I'm losing it. And neither of those are ideal. Also, we need to get all the diamonds out of here. I keep forgetting about this. We need to come back here and check this out periodically. 
make sure we continue to fetch all of the, the, the diamonds from in here. Not not the not the iron dust, though. I don't need that. That's not what I need in my life. What I need is diamonds. Hey, look at that. 200 million. Beautiful. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and make one each of these. They do both have an EMC value. And you'll need the dark matter furnace to get the red matter furnace anyway. But uh, dark matter blocks. Oh, well, looky there. There's some. So I think we needed eight of those. And then on top of that, we'll need three of these. These are the big, bad, expensive ones here. And then we'll also need your regular old bog standard furnace. And you know what? Let's have some fun. Let's make it from scratch. We're going to get ourselves eight pieces of cobblestone. There's absolutely no reason to do this from scratch. I just kind of felt like it. Now, you know how the furnace works, right? You, you, you've all used a furnace. You put coal in it. You, you put an item in there. It cooks it. There you go. You've got your cooked item. Dark matter furnace is a little bit different here. If we just go ahead and say we wanted to cook up, I don't know, some regular old cobblestone. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but let's just say for the sake of things you wanted to do that. Oh my gosh, nothing's happening. Well, clearly I need to put some sort of fuel source in here, don't I? Well, yeah, you know what? I, I suppose you might be tempted to go ahead and just grab a little bit of coal and then go back over here, toss that in there. And, and yeah, look, it works. And uh, oh my gosh, it's fast, isn't it? Look at that. But what if I told you there was a, there was a better way? What if I told you? Just grab yourself one of these bad boys. Slap that on there. Whoa! How is that working? Yeah, this thing can run off of EMC. And you can get EMC through just a regular old energy collector. Now, that's an MK3 uh, there. You know, we could slap down another one if we wanted to. I don't feel like we need to. It's not like we're running out of fuel. Although, that is staying lit more consistently now. now as you can see, it is rather fast. It is rather fast. You know what? Let me actually pull up the information about it here. So as always, I've got a wiki that is very out of date and some of this information might be wrong. Because for some reason, there's no like modern Project E wiki. Let me just look that up. Hold on, hold on. Just, just wait a second. Project E wiki. There is. Again, though, it is also outdated. Yeah, all right. I'm on the Project E GitHub page. We've been here before. A lot of the information is outdated for some reason. But here we are. And let's see if I can find the furnaces. Right, well, it actually has entries for these, which is more than I can say about a lot of it. Uh, so you manage to force dark matter into a wrapper around a furnace. The resulting energy greatly boosts the speed of the furnace. It smelts about two items per second. Ores are magically refined to produce two ingots. Wait, I didn't know that. Hold on a minute. Well, I mean, you know what? I don't think I can get an ore from here. So, I mean, I got crushed aluminum ore, I guess, but that's just, like, that's already crushed, so that's only going to give us one of these no matter what. Uh, I need, like, a regular old bog standard. What have I got in here? I've got... A I mean, I could just pick any of these. I don't know why I'm looking for something in particular. I I'm curious if it would work with uranium ore. I maybe get some tin ore. Why not? I mean, look, it doesn't matter. We're not going to actually... I, I, don't, I, don't, I believe the wiki. I believe the wiki. I don't know why I'm, like... I it only gave me one. And I won't even take the uranium. So, <laughs> wait just a second. Hold on. Let's get some aluminum. Why? I, I was told on the wiki it would give me two. I've been lied to. I've been misled. I've been deceived. It definitely doesn't smelt two items per second. But that might be a modification for this mod pack. Because in this mod pack, we have things like the uh, the macerator over here. That would explain why that would be disabled. Also, are you seeing all those, like, phantom items popping around every so often? I feel like we're cursed or something. Are we seeing ghosts? What's happening? Or is the world breaking from the sheer might and majesty of our large tower? Who can say? Uh, when given the chance, the machine will take EMC from nearby collectors and relays, as well as Klein stars in the fuel slot. So, yeah, you could you could put a Klein star here if you wanted to uh, put a Klein star there for whatever reason do that. Oh, jeez, I shouldn't have done... I mean, I wanted to demonstrate, but with the circuit plate, really, who wants that? Now I just have those, and I'm stuck with them, and I can't really do anything with them. Get rid of the stone, get rid of all that. Cool! Well, there's that. It's pretty neat. I like it. You know what we can do, though? What we can do is we can add redstone. So wrapping red matter blocks partially around the dark matter furnace seem to further boost the speed that smells 6.5 operations per second. That's stupidly quick. Oh, and also this thing is a bit of a pain to break. I should note, I don't think you can break these with regular picks. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that if you want to break dark matter, you need a dark matter tool. And if you want to break the red matter furnace, you got to have a red matter tool. 
And even then, as you can see, it's a bit of a process. So I'm not actually going to fully break it. But uh, I am curious to see the speed. So once more, we'll get some cobblestone here. We got a few stacks of the stuff. You know, why not? We can spare it. I think you can, like, stack it up there. Yeah, and it'll automatically feed it in as needed, which is great. So you have this... <laughs> it is fast, isn't it? It's very fast. It's very, very quick. And once you just stick an energy collector on it, I mean, we don't need them to be that fast. So honestly, with like one energy collector, yeah, it looks like we're doing just fine. So we had a little bit of a slowdown there, but for the most part, it looks like it's definitely maintaining operation. Again, it could have like, we can't see it, but it could have an invisible amount of built-in EMC storage. And during times when it wasn't operating, it could have been storing the energy from these and it's still burning through it. And that's why it's not slowed down with just one. I don't know. I don't care. As you can see, this is probably going to be our best bet for the types of things that we need to have cooked up. Now, we don't probably need the red matter furnace. The red matter furnace is cool. It's very expensive. And sure, we can afford it, but we can also afford, I mean, half the price for a dark matter furnace. And that's probably all we actually need. I think we'll probably stick with that. So how are we going to use these, though? Great question. I love so much that you're here and you're asking the important questions. You know, I kind of thought the tower would be taller. When I first started think uh, building it, I was like, 256 is pretty high up there. It's not that high up there. Also, its shape reminds me of the fib from outer space when it grows, like, all the way and tries to eat... I mean, spoiler alert, I guess, for you know, Larry Boy and the fib from outer space. But it tries to eat Larry and Junior. He's actually, like, sucking on Larry. He's got Larry, like, fully in his mouth. Remember when he just, like, grows a little bit and, and Junior's like, you got legs? And he's like, that may be true. <laughs> But I will always be your little fib. That was terrifying as a child. Hated that. Didn't like that at all. All right. Let's see what we've got in terms of ingots. This is the collection of ingots we have that we can manufacture with EMC. So this is the collection of ingots that we're going to have being manufactured up here. We're going to go ahead and grab all of these. But this is not all of the ingots in the game. And it's not even all the ingots that we actually need. This is just the ones that we can get with EMC. For example... You'll notice that refined iron's not up here and brass is not up here. Both of those, I mean, we'll have to come down here and type an ingot. And as you can see, there's there's more options. Bronze ingot, refined ingot. I don't know if we need to manufacture uranium ingots. Uh, mixed metal ingot. Are we going to do that up here? Are we going to do that down there somewhere? Redstone enriched uranium ingot. I mean, it could be fun. I... I... <laughs> It really does come down to, I mean, blaze enriched uranium ingot. Do we actually need every type of ingot manufactured? That's the question. Brass ones? Probably don't need those, but should we make them? It feels like we should. They've got an EMC value. Did I already add those up here, though? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's fine. So anything with an EMC value, we're pretty much going to ignore for manufacturing. But then there are some things. Like, do, are we going to need red alloy ingots? What about electron time ingots oh you can get the iron compound as an emc and then just smelt it well that's probably the route we would take then but what it what why do we need these you know what let's not worry about it for right now let's go ahead and just flesh this out a little bit we'll leave plenty of room i think the plan was originally go long ways but we don't need to go long ways we can go the short ways here and just have a bank for here's the thing we don't need <clears throat> to manufacture all of these in large quantities some of these we can manufacture in just like small amounts and for those i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to think about this i'm gonna have to give this a good think and figure out what the exact layout needs to be here set these aside for now and i'm going to go ahead and build the first solar flower and i gotta try to figure out where exactly i'm gonna build it i need some like disposable materials how about just uh we'll do wool that's not how you spell wool. I feel like we were close, though. <laughs> Get a stack of wool. It works pretty well as a like a, a placeholder. And so if we go there, this goes here. That's enough to have that and then that. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be touching the ceiling, but that's okay. I don't really mind that all that much. Okay. Clear these all away. There we go. I like that. It keeps it from touching the walls. Yes, it's touching the ceiling above, but at least we can get underneath it if we need to, and we might well need to. And I guess this will be where we start with iron, maybe? 
let's see how quickly it can manufacture iron. Now, obviously, it's got a lot of stored up EMC, so we're not really getting a good representation of how quickly it can manufacture iron, and we're not going to until right now. That's our pace. So let's see, one Mississippi. What was that, about four? And the time it took me to say that? That's pretty decent. We might not need a whole lot of these. I think we've already kind of beat what we had being manufactured down there. And remember, a lot of where our iron is going right now is into creating refined iron. Uh, specifically, where is that being done at? Refined iron, I think, is being done right here. Yeah, that's where most of the iron goes. And that's not going to be done down here anymore. We're going to have a whole separate thing manufacturing iron to be turned into refined iron. And remember, the refined iron is basically just almost 100% going to... Well, no, actually, refined iron goes to a lot of places. I was going to say, it's mostly going to manufacturing those large refined iron like blocks here, the machine blocks. But that's not true. You know, refined iron goes to a lot of different places. I'm having trouble finding one right now, but I'm sure it does. Oh, it's a machine block. I mean, I'm sure it gets used in a lot of different th things. It gets you. It gets used right here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hear me out. Okay, just just listen to me here for a second. I want to. I want to just express a thought that I've had. The relay on the top here, the antimatter relay on the top, this one right here, provides ten bonus EMC, as opposed to these, which produce forty. So, do we really need it? And would it not make more sense to just take it out and move that whole thing up and get us a little bit more headspace? A little bit more room to work beneath it? Because I kind of feel like we should do that. I kind of feel like that makes more sense. Yeah, see, that's way more compact. We get the extra space on top. And then what if, again, possibly controversial, we just... We got rid of this, you know? What if we just got rid of that one and then we had this here like that? And then we could, like, really start to pack these things in very close to one another. You don't have to like this idea. You don't even have to think it's a good idea. I'm just saying, I mean, sure, that means each of these loses 40. And then with the loss of that top one, 50 per tick. But, I mean, they fit in so much tighter. You could have more of them. I think this is the best move. And I'm not going to try to convince you. If you disagree, that's fine. You know what? You're right. That we are taking a hit, and that if we really wanted to maximize performance, we wouldn't do this. But if we want to maximize space, I will stand by this being a great idea. All right, well, I'm back. I paused the recording, I took an allergy pill, and then I did this. And I kind of used wool here. Ignore the fact that it's McDonald's colors. That's not a decision. I, I just had red wool already, and then I grabbed yellow wool, because that's what popped up when I typed wool. There there's nothing like, intentional about this decision. But what I realized is we could have banks of three together like this in this sort of compressed fashion. Kind of looks like a weird like, spiky pill. Like you try to swallow that and it gets stuck halfway down your esophagus and then you die and you try to sue Big Pharma, but you can't win against Big Pharma because everyone in government's like, you know, in Big Pharma's back pocket at this point. Because even if they're not donating heavily to your political campaigns, they've at least uh, hinted at the fact that, you know, you're not going to be in government forever. Maybe you'd like a seat on a board of directors at a big farm at someday. Not that that's a bribe or anything, just saying you definitely have the qualifications. And then you're like, I'm just a little uh, senator and or uh, local representative from Iowa. I don't know about working for Big Pharma and making billions. I don't <laughs> Maybe I'll do things that benefit you. In the anyway, uh, don't swallow pills that look like this. They're probably not good for you. Here's what we've done. We've got you can do a bank of three, a bank of three. Have a nice gap of one in between, because remember, once this is assembled, there will be a capper on it, so there's basically just one space in between. And then we've got the same thing we've got as downstairs. We've got gravity, transport pipes, plugs, gold pipes, iron transport pipes, all going into here. And oh my gosh, look at all that iron ingot. Isn't that crazy? Now, things are going to be a little bit different when we get to this next bank here, because I reckon that this is where we're going to end up manufacturing the refined iron so it's going to be almost exactly like this the difference is going to be there's going to be dark matter furnaces automatically cooking the iron and i think we can do dark matter furnaces i'll have to get the whole thing assembled and see because i mean as you can tell here it's pretty consistent the speed with which iron is being produced 
And I don't know. I think a Dark Matter Furnace can keep up with that. But I guess I'll have to throw it together and we'll have to see. All right. So I've got all of these set up. And boy, are we running low on EMC. I actually had to go get what was left of the diamonds out of the chest in the house. And I haven't needed to tap into those diamonds yet. Although if I ever need to, there is so much EMC stored away in there. It's fine. It's going to be fine. We're going to be fine. We're going to get by this. We have a basement full of EMC that I never go check on that we just know is down there and is fine. So we have the gravity pipes here, and I ran out of plugs. I had to go make some more, and I made a lot of plugs. Let me tell you. What I think we should do... What I'm trying to figure out is, do I want to do that and then have our dark matter furnace and then have another... Well, you can't have a gravity pipe underneath that. Because underneath that needs to be an iron pipe. And I, I had to make some more of those as well. So I guess we'll have to go gravity pipe. See, it's a good thing I decided to move all of this up one. Otherwise, we'd be in a real pickle. If I left that one on the top there, we would have effectively the gravity pipe going into the dark matter furnace. But then we wouldn't be able to fit another gravity pipe onto the bottom of this. We'd have to come up with some other solution. And no other solution would be as good. Am I out of gravity pipes? Did I run out of those two? I think I did. It looks like I did. I thought I made more, though. You know what? I did make more. I know that I made more. Did I leave them? I bet I know exactly what I did with them. See, I unpaused the recording, or I guess resumed would be the correct term, and I was like, all right, let's get this set up. Let's show everybody I'm all ready. I think I got everything here that I needed, but no, I didn't, because I clearly left. They're not in here. Yeah, they are. They're there. <laughs> They do kind of at a distance resemble the cobblestone structure pipes. You can see how I might have ended up just shift-clicking them in there, not paying the most attention in the world. Will I, uh, will I just cut all of this? No. If I hadn't posed the question to myself, I probably would have, and just resumed from right here and been like, Hey, all right, so here's what we've got here, everybody. We've got the gravity pipe feeding into the dark matter furnace, feeding into another gravity pipe, feeding into an iron transport pipe, and then there will be gold to either side of that, and we just need to make sure that we get it configured correctly so that items can flow into and then out the direction we need them to go. And I think we'll probably end up setting this up same as this one here. So we've got the black hole unit underneath the final energy collector, so we'll do the same, and we'll have them all adjusted. Yeah, I guess we'll have them all adjusted to the left, right? That makes sense to me, keep them all kind of consistent. And I guess now what we need to do, though, and this is going to be a little bit of a trick, we have to make sure that this is powered. So we're going to have to add at least one energy condenser to it. I'm going to tuck it away in the back so that it's hidden. I like that. I think that's good. I'll go ahead and preemptively do that on all of these. And I've not configured this one with iron yet because, oh, by the way, we've got 24,000 iron now. That's nuts. Uh, the reason is I didn't want to do it before the pipes were set up because I didn't want to end up with a horrible horrible mess which is what would have happened that's what i kind of experienced when i was setting up the iron pipes because i already had the iron being produced so once i started the process of trying to hook everything in it just went all over the place and it got messy so i'm trying to avoid that this time by having all of the pipes in place before we actually start producing the iron so we're gonna go ahead and place that down there perfect and then inside of here we're going to place a single iron so what's going to happen is those will get manufactured automatically get dumped down into here where they will automatically start being cooked up now right now it kind of looks like the red the or the the dark matter furnace can't keep up and that could be because it's not keeping up <laughs> but that could also be just because there's so much pent up emc and once all that's spent it's gonna slow down a little bit to be more like this but even then i feel like that's probably not fast enough so I think we, yeah, this is starting to fill up. We might actually have to go red matter furnace. So let's just preemptively, before iron starts going all over the place, can we even afford one? If we throw all of that in there, can we get a can we get a red matter furnace? How expensive is one? I've already forgotten. That's it. There's one right there. Goodness gracious, they are quite expensive, aren't they? Is this going to just start spewing them all over the place? Oh, it kind of doesn't look like it is. Oh, that's why. Okay, break that. Place it with the red one as quick as we can. And then we do have a bit of a mess here. I don't think I can get that back in there. Maybe I can. Can I shift click the? No, you can't shift click these in here. There's nothing you can do about that. All right, then in that case, we'll just go ahead and transfer all of this. Oh, wait a minute. No, there's there's like plenty of room in here, right? 
Why are you not running? Oh, you don't have few. Oh, gosh. I accidentally broke the thing powering it on the back as well. Okay, hold on. I got to pick that up. There we go. Silly me. Silly, silly, foolish me. How fast are you now? Are you fast enough to keep up? Oh, it's still filling up faster than it can burn through them. What? Are you kidding me? <laughs> again, again, you know what we need to keep in mind here is that it will slow down eventually. I didn't think that this was a problem we were going to run into, and now they're just blasting out the top here. Oh, dear. Goodness me. You know what? We need the EMC anyway. We need the EMC anyway, so... Oh, it's still coming out up here, isn't it? So that's the result of the, the having nowhere to go and then going back up and then being just pushed through. <laughs> okay. No, we gotta do something about this. This is not This is not sustainable. I can't just stay up there all day. What if we give it a speed boost? I, I don't know if providing it with more power will actually make it run any faster. Because it kind of looks like it's maintaining power and running as fast as it can. Oh, well, wait a minute. Well, now it's actually burning through them, but did that... Oh, it's because that happened. Okay. So, if I break this one, will it continue to... Yeah, there we go. We just kind of needed to get through that disaster period. We just needed to do that and get it to a point where it was no longer going to have this massive backlog of EMC to burn through. And, and now we, we should be pretty good. So we'll go ahead and toss all that back into here. And that didn't give me nearly as much EMC as I hoped it would. But again, there's no need, no, no, no need to panic. We're doing fine. We're going to be able to get all this set up. But there we are. So that's good. Pop that on there. That is good. The gravity pipes are keeping up with it, which I appreciate. We're already almost at a thousand of these. Goodness. Okay, now I just need to make like several more. But with the cost of the red matter furnace, goodness. Goodness, we're going to have to tap into the diamond supply. The very large. And you know what? We might take some of the lessons we've learned up here, making these, to create down here. I just want to remind everyone that the difference between those, because those look so much smaller, the difference is they've taken the top off, and that alone makes them look so much smaller, just taking that top off. We've taken that top off, we've moved them together, and we've eliminated these on the side. That's it. These look so much bigger, but the difference is about 50... I think it is exactly 50 uh, EMC per tick, because this produces 40, and the relay on the top, that relay right underneath here that does nothing other than connect this to there, which we could do without that relay, provides an additional 10. So you're only looking at a reduction of 50... Uh, EU, not EU, uh, 50 EMC per tick, but the advantage is you can pack so many more in. So this is, I think, definitely a better approach than what we're currently doing down here. So if you just really want to ramp up diamond production to obscene levels, this is going to be the approach. And we have 55,000 diamonds, so I'm just going to grab some diamonds in here and uh, toss those all yeah look at that wonderful already back up almost 10 mil what is this slot here oh that was my offhand i didn't realize it would equip things into my offhand that is that is wacky how do i get that back out of there do i need to do one of these there we go i think i could have also just hit f but this is probably what the rest of my day is going to look like i don't know about the rest of you but just uh setting these up you can kind of see the idea for those that can be directly manufactured we'll directly manufacture them for those that need to be cooked up we'll cook them up and then i wanted to throw out there that we might do something different you, you kind of see here i've i've reorganized these up on this top row in order of how much emc is required so these here these these two are the same as iron so we'll probably go ahead and manufacture them in the same way you know dedicated of a three of these in, in a row for things that require less, we might use less. I haven't decided yet. We might do like a bank of two instead of a bank of three. For things that require more, we might do a bigger bank. You know, maybe not a bank of six, even though that would be exactly double, uh, 256 to 512, but maybe a bank of four, and then we get into things like nickel, gold, like that. Oof, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I, I'll have to figure it all out because we don't need those as often right now. But what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to get to a place where... Whatever I want to automate in the future, I'm not going to have to come back here 
and rework the back end again. I want to have excess. I want to have an excess of everything so it's all just good to go. That's where I'm trying to get right now with all of this. And, I mean, gosh darn it, it's going to be a process, but I'd like to get there. One thing I haven't considered is what are we going to do when these fill up? Because black hole units will eventually fill up, and there's no way to stop all this back here from running. But, let's see. Uh, let's see. Black hole storage unit will hold, remember it's a big number, uh, 2,147,000,000. 483,647. So we're a ways off. So I'm not going to worry about it. It's a problem for later. It's like pouring nuclear waste into a big hole you found. The big hole's going to fill up eventually, but not right now. All right, so here's where we are, everyone. I am low on EMC. <laughs> I'm not completely empty, but I'm, I'm low. But... You know, we do still have that entire bank back there set up, and then using wool, this time gray and, and red, because I thought that would be, like, a nice change of pace. I've kind of specced out where I'm going to want everything else. So starting with this next row here, this row is going to be four, banks of four, because the items are a little bit higher value. This ends up being silver, and that is 512. But at the same time, even though it's double the amount of EMC, the current need and projected future need for silver is very low so i can't imagine needing a lot of silver moving forward uh, same with lead whatever this is i think that's invar this is uh goodness gracious as if i know it's nickel I, I don't even know why we've built that in the past i can't remember ever needing it here's the biggest one we've done so far this is a buy five. It's going to make gold. A buy three. Right now, what we have in there is the bronze dust. But bronze dust is actually going to be what ends up getting manufactured inside of the solar flowers or the power flowers, if you're so inclined. And then there will be red matter furnaces. Basically, same setup as over there. This one has nothing in it, but that's just because I've run out of EMC-able ingots that I've currently manufactured. And I'm sure that there's some up here that, you know, we could do the red alloy. We could do red iron compound and, and stick it in there if we wanted to do that and have that be here. I don't know why we would need that. And then finally, we got these two. These are quite low. Uh, you've got this one here, which is aluminum, which uh, we're never going to need. But we've got, and then I think this is brass. Yeah. I don't need them, but might as well manufacture them. And I, I, we might need them in the future. I've even thought about shrinking this further. And having each of these be a buy one, I don't know just yet. I could also leave room, like, there's there's so much space. I could separate all these out and have each one be at the start of a row with the potential. And I kind of wish I'd done that all the way back now. I could reshuffle this. I might. What am I talking about? I absolutely will. I mean, it's going to be a bit of a pain to move all of this because it's already currently operational. But... Why not have each of these be on a single row? And then that way, if it turns out we need more in the future, we can just expand to fill the floor. That makes so much more sense than what I've just done here. That makes way more sense. So obviously that means taking all of these that are currently operational down and moving them over. So that's going to be a bit of a pain in the neck, but I can do it. It won't be that bad. I'll get it done, move all of these, and uh, we're definitely going to fill up this floor now. If we're going to have them all in a row, we might even take up the next floor, and that's okay. We've got so much room. We might as well build everything in such a way that instead of making it as compact as possible, like what we did with the assembly line down there, that's just silly. We're not hurting for space. We'll just have each one be an entire row, and we'll start each one with maybe one or two banks. You know, these up here that we know we need, we know we need iron, we know we need refined iron. We'll have those be three banks, but yeah, that's such a better idea. I'm not going to do it right now, though, because I've been at this for a little over an hour and a half. And, and here's the thing. I don't know how long this video will end up being, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to structure episodes moving forward. Because I feel like the next many hours in TechIt are going to be dedicated to the factory. And they're going to be dedicated to reorganizing things and, and kind of treading old ground. You know, we've, we've already done all this sort of automation down there. All I'm doing up here is it again, but wider, more spread out, kind of more conscientious, conscientious, con con more aware of the fact <laughs> that in the future we might need to expand. So 
I love to hear your feedback. I- episodes like this, are they enjoyable? Did you like watching this? Would you like to see more episodes of me kind of figuring all this out, or should I do all this off camera and not make another video for possibly another week or two when I've actually got something substantial to talk about? This used to be what I would do for channel member episodes, where it was like, hey, I'm just going to shuffle some things around. We're not really going to do anything new or interesting, and that would that would be what I'd do for the channel members. I might end up doing that again, or maybe even some, some live streams for the channel members and just kind of have episodes like this where I'm fumbling around uh go out to them i will say that the longer i'm in minecraft the the laggier it gets and <laughs> uh, i noticed this when i was building the tower i had a marathon like five hour build session and by the end of it it was like a chop and i had to sign out and sign back in and everything was kind of working okay again i don't know what that's all about but just something to be aware of but i think this is where we'll call it for today like I said, I'm going to now begin the process of undoing these horrible mistakes I've made, of, of manufacturing all of these in the way that I did. Uh, just kind of reshuffle them. I'm going to have to wait until I've got enough EMC built up to manufacture the rest of those. Although, I mean, we've got 56,000 diamonds. I could just come down here and do that. And, I mean, boom, look at that. We're already up quite a bit of EMC to 15 million and we've still got 55,000 diamonds so I mean I'm, I, why stop there if I really need to I can also come down here and be like you know what I mean it's it's not as high a value but we do have 49 49,000 iron and that's like 16,000 a stack that's basically useless but there's so much of it it's not going to be used for anything else right now I could just come over here and pilfer it don't even get me started on the volume of there we go. So that finally cleared out. That took forever. We're at 84,000 copper ingots. The reason I decided, even though copper is um, half the value in terms of EMC of iron, I, I hooked it up to a buy three manufacturer because we just use so much of it for things like copper cables and the like. So definitely going to come in handy. 8,000 a stack. I can come over here and sip on this. You know, I'm not going to be making a lot of headway, but I can come sip on it. It's fine. Hey, well, comment down below what you think I ought to do. And until next time, thank you folks for watching. God bless you, and I'll see you later. Bye!